Right. Good luck. So, um, yep, we're going to play. I very, very much am curious what he has prepared here. So, curiosity uh, killed the cat or perhaps the duck. Um, he's played this uh, duck opening quite a few times, so I absolutely need to know what he's prepared against it. Um, so, one thing I'm deliberating, do I want to bring my rook up and over to swing at the head of the bishop? Which I think is a sensible one to... He doesn't really want to... Can I count this right? Um, yeah, he... well, the bishop could move again. Um, now let's get this rook up and over where it's targeting everything at once. Um, although he's played third file rook, so this could get messy. Um... But yeah, the rook can also swing over and start striking at things on the upper left corner. Um, so this could get very exciting very quickly. Especially if we both move quickly like we both tend to do. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to hit the good luck button, didn't I? Let me double check. Uh... Uh, no, actually, I did press it, and just I forgot that I pressed it. All right, cool. It's actually a greet button. It's not a good luck button, but that's the chest saying is good luck. Um, all right, so he escapes with the king. Um, all right, we're going to play the bishop up in this way. The king is the only thing defending the center pawn at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm more than a bit nervous if I move my rook. He's just going to move the bishop, and things are going to happen. So, um, oh wait, if I bring the bishop out, that gets spooky very quickly. Um, Especially because he's already moved his king. This is what I meant by being very curious what he's planning. Um, I could swing the rook over here. You could use the king to... Wait, no. My bishop needs freedom. We'll deal with the most obvious and critical thing first. The bishop absolutely needs freedom here. And once that... Uh, once he does something to try to restrict my bishop... Then we'll concern ourselves with maybe the rook could do something fancy and hit a target. Maybe even the center pawn could be a target. I don't know. But yeah, we're going to play the duck leg castle and see uh, just what he's got in store for us. I've been dying to know. This has been like the uh, focal point of Tornita Master for me so far. I know I've had some very strong opposition, but um, this game is just going to be special because I'm playing Static Rook. Do I play Static Rook? Well, now I do. Um, so... If he looked at my player profile, it says I'm a pure Swinging Rook player. I think I still have the badge up on the... Yeah, it does show that here, too. Um, so. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to trust the game database, but also good to be prepared for whatever you or your opponents have played in the past. Um, all right, so now he's blocked his bishop. And I'm curious. <sighs> I should complete my castle. This pawn is not so much a target because he could move the bishop. Well, if he moves the bishop out to the edge, that's his weakness. If he retreats the bishop, that doesn't help him. Although it does, like, 
extend the influence of his rook. So I'm in no hurry to snipe here. Plus things could backfire if I do try to snipe that and the rook's defending it. Uh, bishop being here is actually a weakness. I have to convince myself of that because um, I can't go anywhere but up. And it's not any more powerful if it steps up the board. Um, so we're just going to defend this pawn. And we've got a long, long fighting marathon ahead of us. Oh, but I was saying, like, if this bishop steps somewhere, then the pawn moves up. So I'm already restricting this bishop as much as I can. And so I'm just going to accept a space advantage in exchange for him not being able to move his pieces anywhere. Um, the risk I run here is that perhaps after my king is secure, uh, it might be difficult for me to attack with all four of my generals sitting back at home. Uh, actually, normally you would play the gold over to the third file. Here, I don't think that's wise, because there's a rook bearing down on the third file. It's not bearing down on the second file, so this gold is actually better placed right next to the king walling it in than it would be anywhere else. It would be unwise to make this gold a target, so maybe it does belong here. The flip side of that is that if the gold stays here, it can't really protect the lance anymore in the corner. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'll have to figure that out. Um... I mean, the reason you would normally move the gold is to protect the corner in the event of a bishop exchange or in the event that the opponent's rook bears down on this file, both of which are not possible here. Uh, the bear rook's bearing down in the third file, which is scary. Um, or I guess the way that's numbered here, that'd be file 7. Um... So yeah, the, this, the potential for a rook takes gold sacrifice to later happen is a bit scary. Um, it really doesn't motivate me to want to bring my gold over. So probably I'll just be moving the bishop up, the pawn up, and see what kind of a fight we can get into. Um, All right, so he's declined to... Well, okay. <sighs> this is complicated. Um, yeah, so since I'm just going to... Yeah, we're going to play the king up first. And I'm still thinking we're... To, okay, we're out of thinking time. Um, hmm. Yeah, we need to give the king an escape square. The potential for rook takes gold is not very high at this instant. Um, Well, so I've defended against bishop drops. <sighs> hmm. 
most of them. Not all of them. Um. Hmm. So normally you'd play the bishop out, pawn up, and you get multiple lances and other things attacking on this edge file. That would be the brave way to do this. Um, I'm trying to find a cowardly approach, and I'm not finding one. Bishop, pawn, pawn, bishop, lance, lance. You can put a pawn down. I can't. I have a hard time breaking this. Yeah, this king exerts an influence there. So what do we do? It would be one thing if I could take the silver and then drop the silver to fork a golden rook, but that does not work here. Um... I'm going to go with plan B, which is an improvised attack. So this way my rook extends an influence across the rank, and I can push my edge pawn and start trading and sacking and whatever's going to happen, happens. Um, if they do pursue my bishop, maybe I sack and then fork and then take this gold, and then rook takes back and I don't have a follow-up. Uh, well, actually, I kind of do. No, gold drop, he could just protect the knight. That doesn't do anything. Um, so yeah, if he moves the silver up, I think I retreat and offer a bishop exchange, although really what I prefer would be to exchange the gold generals, but, uh, wow, unexpected, very sharp. That is playing with more fire than I'm playing with. Um, I'm willing to take my chances here. Let's have some fun. All right, that marks one of us. My bishop does stand in the way of my rook. He is right about that. Um, so my bishop supports any attack on this square. Uh, I don't have any other attack there. My bishop might end up tucking behind a center pawn if I move my knight up. I might manage to get in a swift attack on this side of the board. One, two, three. I mean, what's he going to... He's going to bring this up and build Yager or something. Um, so... What's the motivation to rapidly attack if we can? Um... Wait, can I just harass this pawn, perhaps? I'm exposing my king if I do this, but... Um, I mean, how else do I get pawns exchanged on this board? He is threatening to bring this silver forward. Um, I don't have a good answer to that. <sighs> Yuck. That is not a good answer. 
It is an answer, it's just not a good one. So this could mean two things. It could mean that my bishop's going to retreat. Oh, well, apparently we're in push all the pawns mode today. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, it could indicate that my bishop's retreating instead of advancing. I wonder if it could indicate me just sacrificing the bishop some non-standard way. Oh, hang on. The silver can't pursue the bishop right now. Um, screw it. Let's attack. Um, so my king's not on this left half of the board. I don't mind if we open some lines. But also he's supporting a pawn advance in the center. I'd have to do knight takes. He does knight takes. His knight's stranded. Um, so I'd be sacrificing a knight. Can a knight fork me? Not that I see. And then I'd be trapping his knight. My king is in the center, which is the reason this is unwise. If I push my center pawn and then he pushes on this file stuff, yeah, he moves his silver up to support. All right. Um, that's the reason pushing the center pawn to escape my bishop is slow and hazardous. Um, oh, the other thing I'm neglecting is that he's going to open up this long diagonal and snipe my lance. Um... So I actually do have to run away. Well, this sucks. Um, if I push the edge and he hits my bishop, I have nowhere to go. Yeah, this is not well planned. All right, I've just got to suffer in silence and pretend that we did this on purpose. Yeah, bringing the knight up was a bad idea because of this knight advance. Although this knight advance is risky because it breaks up his castle a bit. Um, so this is a weird, weird game of shogi where none of the pawns have been exchanged. And when pawns do start exchanging, shit will hit the fan and things will get extremely messy. But that hasn't happened yet. We're just on the precipice of whatever's going to happen next. I might need to move my gold over to protect the lance before this diagonal opens. No, no, I can actually hold things on this 3-3 square. His knight might come up threaten to exchange here, but even if exchanges happen I've still got 3-3 covered or can quickly cover it a second time with the gold if I need to. Um, it sucks that my rook is out of action. It really does, but it's never made sense to move the rook. This knight perhaps belonged on the edge file, but then it's subject to an attack. So, um... Not sure where my king is going to go long term. This is spooky. This is super spooky. I might have to move the rook through my first rank to strike toward his king. Um. It's not as if I could just vacate my second rank and use that for the rook, right? Yeah, that's infeasible. Um, I guess the other thing this brings is that I could threaten to actually break on the second or eighth file here. Um, 
with my bishop and rook, we could do a traditional static rook break right over here uh, with the aim of trying to exchange the rooks. So that's actually added into this mess as if it weren't already complicated enough. Oh, but my plan A was just to shove on the second file until this pawn makes it up to 2-6. Pawn takes, bishop takes, and then see if I could do anything more, but my rook's kind of shut out of that now. All right. Oh. This potentially does something about my bishop using, uh, being able to attack on the second file. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure how aggressive this move is. I guess we'll go back to plan A. Let's just, just try to break on the second file so I can get a pawn in hand so I can understand what's going on. Um, oh, also, this might allow me to move my knight in and or offer a knight exchange. The offer would be declined, but still. All right, this is... They call it high Mino, but usually you don't... Well, if you could move the knight up, they call it Silver Crown, but the knight's not moving up here. Um, the head of the knight is my weak point in this position, so exchanging on this file would be quite silly. Um, my king does not belong in the center, given how I'm starting to open up the center. I just don't know where my king belongs. Um, Mm, I don't know where my king belongs. That's not a good feeling. So... Um, I'm going to play a cowardly defensive move. Well, actually, I don't know if he can uh, decline my knight exchange offer, if I offer it. But I don't know why I would offer it either. A knight doesn't really help me here. Uh, well, I'd offer it because my knight sucks here and it's in the way of my bishop. That, those are two reasons. Um... The knight potentially could be a nice piece. Yeah, my knight would suck even more if I push it up the board. We're going to attack this way instead. What's concerning me, well, okay, so what I'm trying to do here is stop him from building the Silver Crown Castle. Also stop him from moving the rook over to the second file. 
Uh, eventually the Rook might make it there. Um, but now with this gold and silver in the way. So we could consider maybe if I could lift both golds and get my Rook behind, I could move it to the second file. That would take quite a few moves. Um, so there's risk entailed in waiting there. Especially if lifting my golds might not even allow this strategy here. Uh, but if it is allowed, and if this king moves toward the corner, that could be valuable. But I don't think it's allowed, and I need to find a plan B. Plan B might be just push um, on file 7 here, try to exchange pawns, and open the file. And if we can, get a rook exchange. Uh, although I don't know where my rook's going to go. And I am opening more spaces for his rook to go. So that's not great. <sighs> yeah, what did I do? Maybe I should not have pushed this push. I just pushed on the seventh file immediately. Tried to force a rook exchange. I just still didn't see where a rook drop would be effective. Um, And I do feel a little bit bad about having played this particular castle, because I know my opponent is trying to learn other openings. So, I mean, he's, he can't be too surprised that I played this, but still, he was probably hoping for something else. Um, on the other hand, I really wanted to see what he had planned here. Because he's played this castle so many times, and I needed to know... Like, what's a reasonable way to respond to this castle? And he's the only one who could tell me that. So, uh, that's why we've got this going. Or he's the best person to tell me the answer to this question. All right. No, sacking the bishop here is not worth it. So... Um... What a mess. He's hard committed to attacking on the left side of the board. An early escape of the king is worth eight moves. So we're going to escape the king early. 
Um, Okay, we're going to get a pawn exchange because I've been pining for this for the longest time. I'm finally going to get at least one pawn exchanged. And we'll see how it goes. Now, I recognize I'm moving my king into a, a zone of danger. Um, but I think... On account of my rook having been lifted, I think this will be okay. Um, perhaps this is a terrifically stupid move and I shouldn't do it? I don't know. Um... Just somehow feels like the thematic thing, even if it's terribly mistimed. So if he pushes either of these pawns to the side of the silver, we exchange both of these and swing the rook over onto the second file. That's the plan. I don't have any other plan, but I probably should have another plan. I just have don't understand what to do. Oh, also perhaps I push the edge file here. With the edge pawn. Oh my god. Are we actually doing this? That is even madder than my idea. Okay, wow. I don't understand this at all. Um... Okay. Uh, it does make some sense. It's actually clever. Well spotted. Um. And let the fireworks begin. I'm contending there will be fireworks, and somehow I will emerge from the flames, hopefully in not more than five pieces. Um, yeah. We're both going to get badly scorched by what's about to happen here. Um... I'd considered maybe if I need to pawn drop on the silver's head and it needs to pick a side, but um, I think also this is reasonable. Well, we're going to go with what I had read earlier. I do see a hole here in my analysis and that they could put a pawn on any of these three squares and things get very messy. Um, 
So yeah, this potentially could be a huge blunder on my part. Um, could also be very successful. I can't really know. Transport evidently doesn't like it. I guess this, the pawn drop in front of my lance makes this far too large a gamble. Also, like, if he takes my lance, um, even if my bishop promotes here and I drop a pawn, and I'm trapping my bishop, aren't I? No, my bishop promotes. He's got to block with something or move the king. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right. So, cooler heads prevail. War has been avoided. And I can attack because... Um, yeah, this is strange. I think after the game, spectators are going to have many opinions about this game. Um, so, yeah, cooler heads prevail, and um, next, my plan of re relocating the rook so I could advance the pawn. Actually looks kind of sane. But then he just drops a pawn in front and it goes nowhere. So, like, what kind of plan is that? Um, Alright. Plan B was that if I take this pawn, and if he immediately captures instead of moving the rook to the sun... Okay, anyway. We'll explain later. Um... I need a move. I need a move. All his pieces are well placed. I need to take this, but he can move the rook there. And that's concerning because I can't put another pawn to protect the first pawn. So, oh, oh if the rook moves, I have bishop takes pawn. Uh, so yeah, actually he's got silver takes, but then I pawn drop, and the silver has to retreat. Um, if I choose to attack the silver right now. If I instead do knight takes, he could do knight takes. My bishop doesn't have many spaces to go. Um, Unfortunately, because he can drop a pawn right in front of my bishop, I kind of have to do something about that. So this is a move I don't want to play, but uh, allowing him to drop a pawn right in front of my bishop would wedge my position in half. I can't let that happen, so we see this happen instead. Uh, every move here is just so confusing. Uh, he's got two pawns in hand, which is more than a bit uncomfortable for me. Um, okay, we're going to prepare to move the rook around, because I have no idea what else to do here. Um... He succeeded in barricading the center of the board so neither of us can get through. And now he's going to try to find a way for one of us to get through. Um, and the reason he's going to do that is because I'm going to be doing the same thing, trying to find a way to remove all these barricades and let myself in. Oh, that makes sense. Um, well, it's the move we've all been waiting for, isn't it? Oh my goodness. What's he going to do if I take that pawn drop on my knight's head? I see. Um, 
Okay, fireworks are happening. Generally, I would not move the pawns directly in front of my king if I were my opponent's position here. There might be some special reason that why it's a good idea in this particular position, but generally I would not do that. Offering a rook exchange. When I've been begging for a rook exchange. What does this mean? Why now? Why now and why not? Also, repawn. But not really. <sighs> So, yeah, he's trying to win my knight. That's the meaning of this. Well, I've been begging for a rook exchange. Let's make it happen. That is a fork. Certainly true, that's a fork. Certainly I've walked into that and given my lance. Uh, I could be more concerned than I am. Um, Okay, let's have the generals protect each other here. Oh no, there's no crying here. The fireworks have only begun. Um, yeah, this is just going to continue to get crazier and crazier, move by move. There's definitely no crying here. We have set off a chain reaction that will not stop. So it's important for us to find the most critical moves here. Um, let's break up his castle. All right, castle has been broken. Um, let's attack the knight. Um, alternatively, do I need a silver here? If I need a silver, maybe I sacrifice the bishop for a silver. Um, if this somehow helps me attack better. Or slows down his attack. It's not going to slow his attack. Each exchange will accelerate his attack. Um, so... This is the only exchange that does not accelerate his attack because it actually helps protect the head of my castle a bit. If I allow pawn takes pawn, I'm screwed, so we have to take one turn out to defend that. But yeah, my rook's going to drop. I'm going to drop a silver right there if he lets me. He's going to have to stop that. Um, right. Um...
30秒。40秒50秒1234567秒6 I think this is the best place I could put my pieces. I don't like that I'm giving him a knight. I do like that my rook is actively posted. But yeah, offering bishop for silver looks smart in retrospect. Although he's going to get this pawn drop on my knight's head anyway, so what am I afraid of? Um, yeah, so he's threatening Tokin takes silver. I can't exactly just let that happen. Um, so we have to attempt to defend the castle. Um, So a couple ideas here. One is maybe rook takes pawn or rook takes knight. The other is bishop moves out to try to hit this pawn and break into the castle some other way. Uh, which I guess he'd meet by moving some piece or placing some piece to defend that. In fact, he should probably block my rook. He's going to. I'm going to be not so happy about it. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what can I do? Um, that's an aggressive move, buddy. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, if I advance, uh, his king, his knights chase my king. My king might survive that. That could be interesting. King might not survive that. It could be disastrous. If I retreat, he just places a lance and things get pretty sad. So, yeah, we're going to go forward to increase the value of the silver at the risk of endangering the king. Oh, right. Um, a promoted knight attacks a lot of squares. Oh, so it does. Oh, well, what can we do? Um, uh, it's most importantly hitting my silver here. All right. Let's start attacking using our pawns, since we have pawns to attack with. I know I sacrificed a pawn to lure the silver forward, and now I'm just scaring it back, so this is a loss of two moves. And a pawn. <sighs> and it actually defends the gold, so it's a loss of more than that. Um, yeah, this is not my best executed plan ever. Oh. Well, how about that? How about that? Uh, yeah, he doesn't have to use his silver there, does he? Um... All right, can we exchange some more pieces, please? I'd anticipated that we'd see this silver climb up here, but no such luck. Instead, um, 
If we could get a bishop exchange, maybe I could use a bishop effectively. Although I think he might suspect I'm up to something at this point. Um, and might decline to exchange pieces. Um, if he does, no big deal. There are squares my bishop can go to. Okay, what's the threat? Uh, there's no mate in one threat here. This is kind of amazing. Um, my king is cornered, but there's no mate in one threat. If Rook's exchanged, there would be a mate in one threat. If he got any general, he'd have a mate in one threat. If the bishop's exchange, actually he does threaten mate in one at that point. Um, yeah, so exchanging bishops would be extremely risky. Um, can't do that. That was my plan, but I cannot do it. Um... That's a problem. Nope. Yeah. So he's busted my plan. Plan B is I need to get all these pieces around my king out of the way so my king can run again. Plan B is not feasible. But exchanging the bishops just gets me mated, so I couldn't pick that. Um, yeah, at this point I'm dead. Uh, it's just a question of when. Right, so he's taken this general... He does not have a mate in one threat right now. Um, I need to play my check. Uh, he allows me to checkmate. Okay. I can accept that. He backs off the side of the cliff and says, wait a second, maybe maybe we don't want to allow the opponent to checkmate me right now. Uh, so I did get a general. Wait. Okay, yeah, he's going to block the check as he needs to. Um, yeah, sometimes you have to adapt your plan to what your opponent's doing. Um... So, like, I had to adapt my plan there as I was in a threat mate. Um, hmm. The concerning part is I don't see a way out. We'll have to bluff it. Um, pretty sure that I made it here, regardless of how I defend. So we defend this way. Right, so... Um, if he gets another general, I'm in trouble. And he's getting another general, so I'm in trouble. Um, so if this pawn gets removed, then the bishop landing on 4-4 um, checks my king on 2-2. 
So 2-2 two, two is a landmine. I cannot step there. So next time he checks me, I have to go to 2-1 instead. Oh, um, yeah, no, I'm simply made it, aren't I? Um, we need to provide this escape square for the king. Um, it is true that a one-space gap dragon is a terrifying thing, usually met by a general drop on the other side. Um, here, although there might not be a general drop, um, there are ways you can separate my pieces. All right, so my move is forced. Let's play the forced move. All uh, right. Oh, I could have gone back here. I think I get mated if I do that, but that was an option. Um, I should have at least looked at it. Wait, uh, what's this? All right, I have to capture. My king does dream of escaping up the board. That's always the dream. Uh, wait, no, hang on. He's got a rather straightforward mate here. Wait, no, actually, yeah, it's mate in five. There's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. Except watch. Actually, yeah, it seems unlikely that I escape this in any event. Um, right, so if I run backwards, I'm screwed. So we're going to try running forwards. All right, uh, we continue running. Yep, and he finds it. Well played. Good game. All right, so that's turning to master round three. Um, ah, yeah, what an adventure. Uh, move 100, we resign. Um, so, yep, uh, we see there are apparently ways to respond to the duck leg attack. 50, I had a thing. All right, thank you. Because, like, I don't know where the things were this game. Um, yeah, this is aggressive. This is, like, way the heck more aggressive than I usually play. Um, okay, so we had pawn 2 six. Wasn't that my move here? I did play pawn 2-6. Um... Oh yeah, no, it doesn't surprise me. Oh, 52. Alright. Uh, so I played pawn takes pawn. But there was a thing here? I'm curious. This is like way too much to figure out. Oh, Lance sack. Like here. Alright. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so land. we drop a pawn. We push this pawn. Um, 
Yeah, that's a breakthrough for sure. Yeah, this is more interesting than the game. This is what I should have done. Um, then pawn drop question if ignore. Yeah, so... Yeah, we got stuff planned here. Uh, don't take the pawn. So, Mikal thinks that uh, perhaps there's better... Um, like, for example, you could just defend the lance. Um, uh, yeah, this, this uh, does look more interesting than the game. Uh, yeah, I missed this. Uh, so, uh, Transport wants us to go back to 48 to look for stuff. I can't blame him. Um, yeah, yeah, I, well, yeah, let's, let's go back and take a look here. Um, oh, uh, good evening. We've got quite a people, quite a few people talking here. Uh, um, Rook takes pawn here. Rook takes pawn, 48 pawn 1 7. Yeah, this is the way to do it. <laughs> uh, since I'm playing the Duck Castle expert, I need to learn how to defeat uh, Duck Castle. Uh, thanks for the recommendation. Yeah. So this is this is since when I play Duck Castle. It's when I'm playing against the expert of Duck Castle. This is the best way. Uh, yeah, to flitter. Yeah. Well, now I have some understanding what playing since uh, looks, uh, looks like. So yeah. Right, fair enough. I like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is the pawn push idea already? Yeah. So, okay. We're looking at potentially dropping a pawn here. And then I guess we take this? I don't know. And pawn drop here. This... There's got to be something to be done here, right? <sighs> yeah, I don't know about any of this. This seems complicated, but we have Tori the Panda um, suggesting it, so... Got to go with our strongest um, spectator's opinion. Yeah. Uh, spinal taps and watching a hero man. So. Yeah, it also was fun uh, getting a chance to play that in uh, Shogi Explains Simul the other day. Yeah. Yeah, so this is all too heavy. This, this, this doesn't quite work. There's something else. I don't know exactly where. Yeah, there's a lot of arrows that can be drawn, but I think I'd miss the moment at this point. So, not sure that there's a whole lot more I can do here. 43, could a ducky of X... Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Duck Castle is considered the best castle of all time. Uh, yeah. Well, 
he did defend, uh, uh, threatened, uh, wait. Um, uh, close call there. I was wondering why Ducky didn't swap file. I don't know, man. I'm gonna rook over the second file. You know. I mean, it's one thing to wonder. It's another thing if you're making statements. And if you're making statements, try to back them up. Um, yeah, so I think... Let's go back. Because I think I'd missed my moment much earlier. I'm not exactly sure where. Like, maybe I still need to do this. Um... This whole, this thing, I don't know. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, well, that could be interesting, too. It kind of shuts out my rook, but uh, it could be useful. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I think... Mm, I don't know that the silver can fight its own battle there. Um, so this is how the game did progress. Uh, this too was interesting. Maybe here I need to, like, play this sort of thing. I don't know. Um... I'm just super confused by him blocking the diagonal of his bishop. Although there are other diagonals on this board. Um, yeah, I used the knight and the lance on the edges. Yeah. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh... This game, it uh, didn't because uh, we defended. Oh uh, well. So, yeah, this gives me some idea of what to try if I ever get stuck facing Duck Castle. Is that I can play this kind of Mino shape and stick the king on 3 9. And apparently, I didn't feel like I had a good way to attack this. Um, so I think I have to agree with the spectator sentiment that the way to play against Duck Castle is just play reasonable moves and wait for the opponent's attack to run out. Um, I think I have to agree with that. Uh, yeah, if you can see all the tactics, maybe it's playable, but Silver Crown does look interesting. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Um, I was too impatient here. Uh, this was probably the strategic uh, blunder. After which, I just can't do anything. Um, yeah. So, here I need a different idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. Engines will say things. Spectators are suggesting other ideas, um, but I'm really not convinced. As scary as it is, I just don't see a way in. Like, Killer Ducky's better at reading stuff than I am. So, um, yeah, there's, what can I do? Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Stop bishop 7-1. Seven, 7-1. One. Seven, one. I'm not sure what that even refers to here. Oh, he's talking about bishop 1-7. Yeah, um, on the other hand, he can't do the run away from the edge attack. Well, so you dominate um, the left, center, and right sides of the board. Um, I don't think uh, I have a successful attack. I can't spell at all here. Um, but yeah. Like, I think he's played sensibly, and I can't find any reasonable way to break in here. Um, I did try to do tactical stuff. Spectators are suggesting things, but those things don't work. Um, like, yeah, we. I'm not... What do you want me to do? I, I know you're wanting me to suggest and play through this, but um, you need four pieces for an attack to be successful. And I don't have four pieces attacking. And my rook is out of commission. My king is in the wrong spot. Like, everything here has gone downhill. There's And this pawn move is the move that seals my defeat just accelerates the attack against my king. I played it out of anxiety, and it really violates the spirit of what Shogi Harbor just taught us the other day, that the duck castle needs to play patiently, unless you get some sort of quick attack that's successful. But we're on move 41 here. Quick attacks have not been successful. Um, uh, you looked at this line previously. And he believes the edge attack works. Um, yeah. Uh, I played it in her assignment. Uh, yep. Uh, she pointed out that if uh, you survive the opening, I need to play patiently. Uh, on two six is not patient. So, yeah, you've survived the opening, and at this point, um, yeah, I just need to regroup and come up with another plan, and I'm just not good at all at planning. I might be good at reading, and I have to contradict what I said earlier, that, like, he's actually better at planning, I'm better at reading. But here I have no plan, so I'm just screwed. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, well... You're talking about a quick attack in the opening. We've made it to move 40. I could just sacrifice the bishop on 1-7 right now for nothing. That doesn't do anything. I've missed my chance. Um, there are many successful quick attacks, and what I played was not a successful quick attack, and it's too late. Um, yeah, no, I'm taking what you're saying out of context, but you're also not putting... Like, it's too late right now for me to consider a sack. I needed to have attacked earlier, and I blew it. Um, and spectators are saying that this stuff works, and I'm thoroughly convinced it does not. But, yeah, I don't know. Lily's also right that, like, my bishop did nothing in the real game. Um, I think at this point... It's too late for me to try some crazy attack. My king is under fire and in the wrong spot. And I just am suffering at this point. Um, I mean, there's lots of shogi engines out there. 
I'd like to think that it, we at least one of them would agree with my assessment that this is just a miserable position. Um, I don't think attacking is the right thing for me to be doing when I'm in trouble like this. Uh, yeah, I want a promoted piece. So I have to back up and find an opportunity. And really, the best opportunity was like back here. This is where I need to be considering this sort of stuff. Um, and after I play this, like maybe they play king up. And we do the traditional sack. Um, and I don't think this is any good for me. Um, so this is why I didn't do this. Uh. So, yeah, I don't know what else I could try here. Um... I mean, I guess, yeah, there is potentially me putting this second lance down on the file and then threatening to, like, break the file this way. Um, maybe. I'm not so convinced. Um, all right. Well, it's good to see that uh, uh, folks have their opinions validated. You're... Yeah, I'm not sure. It's just complicated. But I think I've made my challenges greater. So, like, here, if I play this, this just crumbles. I'm without a pawn in hand, again. Um... Well, oh, oh, I missed this, didn't I? Uh, this I missed. Uh, interesting. Um, now, the fact that he actually has a defense is interesting, too, but, um, yeah. This is something that can at least be attempted. This could be fun. It's not great. But, um... Yeah. It's definitely not great. Because I've given the lance. My opponent has a promoted bishop, which is eventually going to come back and defend super well. Um... So, I have a silver in hand. At this point, he has to do something about... Uh, me trying to break his castle. Um, problem is, he's got several decent moves. And my own castle's kind of prone here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> having any counterplay against an opponent with a horse is better than having none. Yeah, this isn't very much... Yeah, one pawn is not a great deal of counterplay. And even though I have a silver fork threat, that's easily avoided. Um, so, yeah, this isn't quite what we're looking for. So, that's why I did... Yes, I think I just thoroughly goofed this opening. I mean, possibly this might be worth considering, too. Although, what the hell do I do now? Uh... <sighs> We're always reading stuff, and none of it ever works. And that's why we read more and more. Um... And still none of it works. But we try. Lily wants us to sack the silver there. Uh, does that work? 
That's interesting. <laughs> um, this does threaten to promote. Um, oh yeah, silver there might be smarter. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, I'm not so convinced that this is great. Um, although, what's the rook even do? It's a fork. Sure, it's a fork, but... That's yeah, interesting. It's so weird. Maybe the silver sack is of some interest after all. Because, yeah, that fork would get the knight. A knight could be a useful attacking piece. Um, yeah, maybe this is exactly what I needed. Huh. Yeah, the other thing is the token could approach the castle, even though the gold kind of keeps it away. Um, yeah, this is, this is the point. So, because this is so effective, um, because this is so effective, then, oh, I guess maybe the sack does work. Huh. Yeah. Maybe Lily's right. Um, so if I sack... Um... I might, they might need to stop my promotion at some kind of price. So, yeah, you might see something crazy like this happen. Um, but then I have a bishop in hand. <laughs> we sack the bishop? Really? No, we're putting the pawn there. That was amusing. Um, but no, the pawn drop seems more sensible. Oh, there's no way to defend that, is there? Oh, well. Huh. Wait. How is this so effective? Uh, so we're threatening this fork. Huh. That is really weird. Why is this so confusing? Maybe this allowing the sack might have been the problem. Um, yeah. So even though we're down an entire bishop, uh, we do get a token behind enemy lines. Yeah. So we're looking at rook exchange. And then just seeing... Well, it's not my move, but we're seeing if I can play effectively here. Um... Yeah, and I don't see a great way for them to play. Because the Duck Castle is actually really strong in the opening. Looks a lot easier for me to find moves than for my opponent to find moves. But also they're up material. They're up a bishop. Which, who knows how long that's going to last. Not long, but... Um, 
Yeah, it's pretty wild. This, yeah, well, this is true. I have not played Static Rook in a long time. Uh, Tori does not like this. Um, just because we're down a bishop. Um, and our attack is kind of slow. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Even though our attack's kind of... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, he would take this position for Killer Ducky. I mean... Yeah, this is complicated, but uh, being up a bishop is a nice, nice advantage. Um, so as soon as you finish surviving the opening, you do get a decent position. <laughs> you never want this. Well, uh, an entire bishop is a really useful thing. It's problematic that they don't have a pawn in hand. Um, there's so many problems. This is not a comfortable position, but I think it's playable. And I struggle evaluating this, but uh, Tori would take this percenta each time. Um, Yeah, I think this is the debate that requires actually playing games to figure out if the duck castle holds or not. Uh, I think Lily might be right that this is kind of close to an end game. You're questioning, like, you've entered the phase where both players are going to start attacking the opponent's king heavily. And it's just a question of does uh, Senta survive here long enough to make use of their advantage? Uh, I could always go 8-3 silver, 7-2 rook. Oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> it would be pointless for me to play as I'm not a shogi player. Yeah, says, yeah, the strongest player spectating. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what else to say here. Computer prefers Senta. So I think the deal is that if this token goes into the corner and chops all the pieces, that takes time. And somehow you can exchange a pawn somewhere. Yeah, it's like a gambit. Oh, all right. Take uh, care. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Killer Ducky's been busy recently. Um, sent to my or about eight hundred points. Well, I mean, a bishop is worth a lot. Um, we humans struggle with this sort of thing, but. Um, I think a computer could successfully defend and then figure out how to attack. It's complicated. Um, um, so I think I just blew it multiple times in the opening. And multiple times in the middle game and in the end game. Um, so I think I just blundered throughout every phase in this game. Uh, we could look at the remainder. Like, yeah, folks have opinions. I really don't think there's any way I could have made this work. Um, but, and I didn't like this either. But I don't want to dwell on that. You need to do the post-game discussion. I'm not doing the post-game discussion, and like consequently everything. Uh, I think this was a decent play, but it's just difficult here. 
Um, I found it attracting that, like, somehow if I got a silver, my rook and silver on the second rank could do something. But, yeah, this is an alternative. Um, I think I am toast, though. Um, like, it's very difficult for me to make progress here. And it's not so difficult for my opponent to make progress against my exposed king. Um, yeah, good luck finding the right moves, Ascenta. Go to the bishop trade. Maybe I hit a swindle. Yeah, I wonder. Um, bishop trade. Where are we talking about a bishop trade? Oh, here. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is my practical chance. Um, maybe I had a swindle. Yeah, this is what I read. And then this, and then this, and then what? Uh, we take here. Um, did I hallucinate something? Maybe I hallucinated something. That's only a discovered check. Oh, I can't pawn drops. So I have to. I have to do this. Yeah, I didn't see silver drop there. Uh, okay. Yeah, then they take here. Are we seriously still looking at moves here? Um, I have... Like, what's a lance going to do for my attack? I think my attack has concluded, since I don't have four pieces attacking. Um, pretty sure my attack is concluded. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there was a way out of this. So, because they have that uh, really strong check right next to my king and there's nothing I can do to stop it, I think I'm in trouble. Um, I mean, what can I do, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> fun. Uh, it's an interesting point. I have actually written code. I've not tested it. Um, or I've attempted to test it. Um, and it's not gone well. But also somebody else has written an application to test this, but I've not um, installed it yet. But also there's an open source tool. No, I'm sorry, a closed source tool that I can download to... I can just export the game out of this interactive interface. But then I won't be able to chat with anybody on this site. We're drawing all these lovely arrows. So, yeah, I'm pretty convinced that I'm dead here. Uh, yeah, I have written a script to analyze games in bulk. I've got... A script to import games into a database. I've got scripts for stuff, but existing tooling is better than my scripting so far. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, uh, so yeah, because uh, it would have been nice if I had a swindle here, but yeah, I think this dragon takes covers everything. I have only two pieces attacking. Um, and as we saw, like, my opponent has a way to checkmate me. This is kind of interesting. Um, unfortunately, well... 
Hmm. I thought this was trivial. Maybe it's not. Maybe there's something here. Uh, this lance cuts off this. This cuts off these squares. And I have a pawn on this file already. So this just checkmates. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I could put a pawn on that file, can't I? Uh, so that does not just checkmate. All right. Hmm. My mistake. All right. Um. Hmm. <laughs> So, what is done here, I wonder? Yeah, that looks like mate. So, I think I need to do everything with check. But we just looked at the one line where I do that, and there's nothing I can do. Uh, well, okay, so folks want to see me play it out, evidently. Um, so I block here. Oh! I forget how pieces work in Shogi, don't I? So if the lance takes this, then if it promotes, that's not check. And if it does not promote, that is check, but then the king runs away. That was the trick. So because of this trick... Um, yeah, we have to find a way to refute this move. Now, during the game, I was saying, like, my pawn's just going to play something like this. Um, so, this still could have been challenging. But this might have offered better chances than the game. Oh, right. They are attacking stuff, aren't they? Alright, fine. Um, yeah, I guess I can't ignore this forever. Alright, and then we cover the square. Cover all the squares right next to the king. The one that scared us the most was this drop on 2 2, but um, that seems to have been dealt with. Mm, let's put this here. I don't know. Like, the deeper we go down this line, the more it looks like my opponent survives it. Uh, traditionally, uh, folks would analyze this kind of end game, or they'd analyze simpler end games than this. Um, generally, analyzing a game to try to find a mate is a futile exercise, because if there is a mate, you would have found it during the game, usually. Um, Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at sharp moves here, that's for sure. Um, I'm trying to find a way to checkmate outright.
It really feels like there should be a mate here. Oh, maybe you're indicating it, actually. Um... Yeah, how about this? I mean, this is a sack. <sighs> okay, we could start with the other sack. This looks like mate in three, but we can look at, like, I don't think this mates as swiftly. Um, it is check. It has that advantage. But you're talking about this check now. And now they block. Oh, maybe this does still work. Yeah, and then this checkmate's on the other side, doesn't it? Um, wait, I'm sorry. I might have messed up here. Um, yeah, this is why you, when you're doing game analysis, usually you don't focus on endgames. Because either there's some dumb refutation, or it works, and the engine could have told you that. Um, promote the rook before dropping the gold. Um, yeah. Let's see, what was wrong with my suggestion? Like, doesn't this immediately mate? If we just get one tempo where we're not in check. Because we have this check and this mates. And there's nothing the opponent can do about it. Um, I mean, they could block the lance with something, I guess. Okay. But then you still have this check. And the king moves, and you still have this mate. Uh, so, I mean, this looks pretty direct. This covers these squares. So, like, there's a mate threat here, a mate threat there. In fact, yeah, with the silver drop, we just... Drop the bishop here, it's mate in one. Um, so, um, yeah, missed king takes four nine. So, yeah. So I sh still should have tried the bishop exchange swindle. Even knowing it was a swindle, it was my best shot. And since I didn't try the swindle, I just lost. Uh, well, I saw it. Uh, I saw that my checks run out and he has enough to make. So, that's why I didn't try it. Um, so there's, but it's still my best attempt, even if um, the checks do run out. Uh, Alright, so folks still want to continue looking at this for some perverse reason. We can continue looking. Um, oh, lower. So we're talking about this. King moves. We take here. Didn't we find a... Oh. Um, I was suggesting pawn drop here. Uh, which doesn't work. Uh, or at least as dubious. 
even if it does work, this is not the most accurate way about it. Um, yeah, actually, so... Hmm. So checks do run out, but um, that doesn't matter, does it? In, even though he's got enough material to mate, he doesn't have enough time to mate. That's weird. Huh. Okay, so given all this, I guess we need to try that move. We need to cut off the rook and use the dragon to defend the king. And I'm not convinced that this is the... No, this is not right. You don't drop your heaviest piece right there. That's a really heavy piece to just give away. Why not this one? Um, I guess why not might be that maybe you think that this might not work. Because I don't see how this works. Maybe we do need to give away the land, or silver. But then we're out of pieces. Um, so... Yeah, okay, fine. We'll take a look at it this way. Since this is what the crowd demands. I just don't see the point. What's the purpose of any of this? So we, the opponent has two bishops, a knight, a silver, and three pawns to attack us with. Um, and we have a rook, and that's all we can use. Doesn't Senta have a mate with the bishop? Uh, maybe. Very maybe. So, again, we generally reserve this sort of analysis for the engines, even though it is significant, um, and even though it's quite exciting. Um, yeah, not immediately. So the reason we reserve this sort of thing for engines is because they can do it a thousand times best, better than we can, and we don't learn anything from looking at it other than, did you consider this move? Like, okay, yeah, I considered bishop exchange. I didn't think it worked. I'm still convinced it didn't. But if it did work, I mean, I'm not going to play like an engine anyway. So... Um, but yeah, the silver, right, yeah, the silver mate is just right there. So there's really no point in looking at all the other variations. Um, <laughs> this is like when Lily analyzes every game. Yeah, no, I'm working on sume puzzles, things that are designed for humans to learn from. This kind of analysis, um, this is analysis, this is breaking down of ideas. This is not synthesis. Um, if you want to learn anything, you have to synthesize new ideas, and just analyzing all day is not enough. You need something that can build a constructive framework to put ideas together. Um, true. Uh, So, let's see. This post-game discussions is one of the key features that Hidechi incorporated into 81 Dojo. Yeah, well, what's crazy is that, like, players get excited about this endgame phase, and there's really no switch to say, just, like, this is not meriting analysis. Like, we found here, clearly, there is going to be a silver drop. Uh, so now that we see that the silver drop just wins the game on the spot, there's not much else to look at. It's good to identify what the candidate moves are, but identifying whether those candidates actually work or not is just an exercise in, like, just being able to, I don't know, my endgame solving skills aren't anywhere near the level where this kind of analysis helps me at all. Um, uh, 
Yeah. So I need to work on my openings and my middle games and my end games. But just looking at this is not going to help my end games. Because we're never going to have this exact position. What helps with end game study is positions where there's only one king on the board. Positions where there's multiple kings on the board are not for beginners. Yeah. Yeah, the way that I tend to handle things is that way, where I play questionable opening, get a lost middle game, wait for the opponent to blunder, and pounce on the blunder, and they get an enormous endgame advantage and just mate. That's the way I do it. Um, yeah. Tell that to the Professional Shogi Association. Uh, it's true that I'm not, like, the most rank beginner here. It's true that, like, I've made it to one don on this site. But my endgame solving skill... Like, I still got the book from Katagami about, um... Which pieces do you need to checkmate? I'm still drilling through chapter one. There's like 30 problems. Each one has three parts. And I have never gotten a perfect score through my several runs through this chapter. It's a good book. It's an excellent book. And it has a variety of positions where there are just like three pieces on the board. Or two pieces. And it asks you if you had this piece or this piece or this piece in hand. What would the three outcomes be? Would you mate or not mate in each of those three circumstances? Even when there's just like two or three pieces on the board, I'm getting it wrong. This kind of analysis where there's 40 pieces in play is not constructive for me yet. Uh, I assume Nyrock has it. If not, he should have it. Um, this kind of analysis, while it's exciting, it does not help. What does help is knowing, like, did I see this idea? Yes, I consider bishop takes bishop. Um, my sense was that, uh, and I could be mistaken, and that's totally fine, but this is my sense, is that this does not work. So I played the other move, which also didn't work. Um, but no, I did find this candidate. I had been planning it in advance, and then I backed off when um, my feeling was like, we have a line like this. It, it is tricky. It is certainly tricky. Um, but no, like, my rook gets shut out, my bishop's under attack, and even if, like, somehow this does work, um, I mean, yeah, this is sharp stuff, for sure. There's no question that this is sharp, but... Um, like, it just, I had the sense that this would lose the game for me, so I tried something else. And we could look at these things all day, um, but I, what's important is whether or not I found bishop takes bishop. I did find bishop takes bishop as an option. I considered it. I rejected it, but at least I saw that it was a possibility. And at this phase, what matters is, can I find the candidate moves? And I didn't find this, or I did find this one. But in the opening and in the middle game, I was not finding ideas to, like, break here. Or I didn't see the potential pawn drop behind the pawn. Like, these kinds of ideas I need to consider. Um, and, yeah, once I'm finding all the candidates then we can worry about trying to evaluate. Um, but if we're going to apply... What's the Grandmaster's name? Kotov. K-O-T-O-V. He's written a book, Think Like a Grandmaster. And he explains like how to think like an engine. You need to enumerate the candidate moves, iterate through them in a logical fashion, and evaluate each one. And, like, this is how engines uh, uh, work through positions. It's not really the way real humans think about positions, because Grandmaster will look... He'll spend some time looking at one move, and he'll spend some time looking at a different move, and he'll go back and look at the first one sometimes. Whereas Kotov would say, no, don't do that. But um, enumerating the candidate moves is important and a vital first step, and I'm not doing that right right now. 
Um, but once I've identified all the candidates, then I need to start focusing on my evaluation. Like, yes, theoretically, um, the next skill to work on is iterating through those candidates in a logical fashion, but I actually have that skill down because I've played tournament chess ever since I invented the game. Um, so, yeah, what do we have here? Um, we have comments. We have comments. Uh, so, yeah, just like another Canadian two down out there. Uh, but yeah, I think I've got the skill down where I can iterate through the candidates. I just need to identify what they are in the first place. And then I need to work on my evaluation skill. And my evaluation skill is going to depend upon a lot of things. Um, I think it was Grandmaster Rubenstein who says that a mastery of chess comes from mastering the end game, then the middle game, then the opening. I could be misattributing that, but the same applies here. And so I'm still working through Katagami's book about two-piece and three-piece positions. I'm still getting the elementary positions wrong. But once I get those right, then I can focus on positions with three and four and four and five and just work my way up to much more complicated stuff. Analyzing this is not going to help me because I'm not going to remember it or have any logical way to build this into something I can apply in the future. Um, when you left Japan, you qualified for your Shodan promotion through a middle school shogi tournament. Um, so I've been trying to wrap this up because I'm producing a video from it, and this is already running on two hours long. Um, so I'm trying to cut short this endgame analysis that is never ending. So I think I'm going to stick with my plan and cut the analysis there. And if we really want to discuss this, there are discords in which we can look at it. I don't think what I did was entirely not sensible here. Uh, I think Killer Ducky had played quite well. Um, I think there might have been shorter mates that he could have had at, toward the very end after like I played this the wrong bishop move. I think my spectators are letting me know that like I played the wrong bishop move. And, okay, yeah, that's nice. Um, that's very thoughtful. Uh, now this rook sack was actually really clever. Um, although there are other ways to mate here too. Uh, so yeah, very resourceful on my opponent's part. It was exciting being able to start the game with the ducky castle. I'm going to cut the analysis here because like otherwise we're never going to finish. So yeah, if we have comments, surely we have a discord in which we can share stuff. I see folks feel quite strongly about this game. Um, I think my I have better games to come. So what's Duck Castle's weakness? That if you don't find your opening opportunities, like here, this I think was the key opportunity. I kind of consider, I saw this, I completely missed this. I was searching for, like, I considered Silver Drop on all these other squares. I didn't see this one. Um, so, yeah, this uh, was a failure on my part to identify a candidate. Um, and this might make this sacrifice justifiable. Actually, I considered this, 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 a lot of other things too, but I missed the candidate here. This is the one that works. Um, or maybe works. So Duck Castle's weakness is that if the this player sacrifices their bishop, or really doesn't do so, uh, two things can happen. One, if you play a bad sacrifice, you're screwed. Two, if you don't play a sacrifice, this position is quite unpleasant. So this is the weakness of the Duck Castle. Um, in combination with this. Unfortunately for my opponent, this is also where they put their king, so it's going to take a long time, but um, yeah, no, this is definitely a weakness. Um, possibly this move was not necessary. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a very long and very difficult game, but you're asking what the weakness is. I'm telling you this is the weakness. Um, the other weakness is the third file, the fourth file, the fifth file. Oh, sorry. Uh, clear. Yeah, all the files are the weakness, as well as all the diagonals, because these positions are... These pieces are not well placed. So, just like every line is a weakness. Yeah, it's complicated. Um, but no, you showed me that like you could actually build Mino and attempt to transition the castle. And that kind of forced my hand to play this pawn up, and I've created weaknesses behind my lines. Um, yeah, pawn 2 8, yes, okay. So, yep, there's a lot of stuff to consider. And maybe in the future I should just never play this again because it seems too interesting and um, there's just too much to analyze. So, uh, yeah, no, I think it's complicated, but I was of the opinion before this game that it was just super easy to play this castle, and it's not. So, um, We've certainly got a lesson in modesty here. Uh, thanks everyone for the help trying to analyze this uh, whirlwind of a game.